Kanban wa watashi wa namae wa Osaka Guru desu, yoroshikune. And today I'm going to be reviewing Castle in the Sky, which is also known as in some countries Laputa Castle in the Sky. In Japanese it's called Tenkyu no Shiro no Raputa. And this is technically the first ever Ghibli movie because Nausicaa, the movie that came in 1984, was not done under the Studio Ghibli name. They chose the name afterwards of the release of the movie. So technically this is the first, although Nausicaa is really uh, considered as a Ghibli movie though, because it was done by the same people. And Castle in the Sky actually has a lot of similarities to Nausicaa in my opinion, and to be honest to a lot of other Ghibli movies, because Miyazaki seems to have a bit of a trend in his movies with flying things, whatever is Hall's moving castle with flying birds, or Porco Rosso with planes, or Nausicaa castle in the sky with airships and flying drones and other things. And you have a lot of flying things in all of the Ghibli movies, and you can see if you look at the list, it seems to be a one of the recurring themes. And nothing wrong with that, it just seems to be a passion of his, M might be related to his father being a pilot. And Castle in the Sky is pretty good movie. I would have well, a lot of the Ghibli movies are. But let's start with like the soundtrack. I thought the soundtrack was pretty good. It was done by Joe Hisashi, and he has done pretty much almost every Ghibli movie scoring. He also did Nausicaa, and Nausicaa had a pretty good soundtrack, by the way. A lot of good tracks. Castle in the Sky was pretty mediocre soundtrack, to be honest. A lot of okay tracks, but nothing like super um, something that would I would able to remember. Um, the ending song or the opening theme song, essentially, of the movie was too, I like that one, but still kind of like um I would have to say bit mediocre in that sense in in Ghibli level. And Castle in the Sky has a lot of similarities to Nausicaa, as I said. Both of them have a lot of flying things and airships. You have, it it's also seems that they, um, a lot of, especially in the earlier ones, you have a lot of characters that look very similar to each other. I mean, Princess Sheeta, which is the main uh, girl character in this movie, looks kind of similar to the main character in Nausicaa. A bit different haircut, but the facial features almost similar, except Laputa is a bit um, or is is called actually Lushita is the other name, but Shita is very similar looking, bit younger though. And then you have Pazu, which is uh, voiced by Mayumi Tanaka, who is uh, voice of uh, Luffy in One Piece, very legendary name, I mean voice actor. And um, his face also reminds me of quite a lot of a lot of the male characters in a lot of other Ghibli movies, uh, almost identical in a lot of ways, which is. Some people think it's a good thing. I don't necessarily think so, you know, but back then maybe there was not as much detail into the characters as may have been in the story or the animation. And in a lot of ways, um, as I said, the story is also kind of similar. So you have... Um, so the story starts with Sheeta being in this airship. She has been adopted by the government agent Muska, and is attacked by Captain Dola and her air pirate sons who are in search of Shida's crystal amulet, which is a very, very special object. And Shida doesn't really know what the crystal object really is capable of. She doesn't really understand her, her origins like fairly well. And then after the airship, the air pirates like invade the airship, she falls from the ship and the the crystal pretty much the crystal amulet makes her glow then she doesn't really crash in the ground it kind of like floats down and then the other main character pazu finds her and you know then they become friends and then they you know uh, pretty much she that sees this like a, a poster by laputa which is the castle in the sky that's where the name comes from and this is this ancient place. Some people say it's just a myth. It's just a urban legend. It doesn't really exist. And, you know, technology is not so vast. A lot of people don't have, like, airships or anything. So they have not been able to find it because it also, like, moves around around the world. And it's kind of like, um, in, in a lot of ways, like in Nausicaa, there's this sort of, like, an ancient technology thing. And then you have the main character being a bit of a, like... Uh, related to the place and all and the legacy and is kind of like the chosen one 
kind of like in Nausicaa. And that's pretty much like the premise. And then they try to escape from the pirates and the government. And then eventually, obviously, they end up in the castle in the sky. I won't be going into too much in details what happens there or anything like that. But overall, the story is pretty good. I did enjoy it a lot. It had a happy ending. And it's a very, well, I think there was a lot of like mythology behind it. That's something that I really, really enjoy. But the problem with mythology is when you have a limited amount of time to explain and go in the background story. Um, they didn't really go too much in detail explaining what Laputa was and why this ancient civilization vanished and what really happened to them. And it just they don't sadly go into that. And that was kind of like one of the interesting things that kind of draw me in to the story. And that's definitely something that they could have explored maybe in like a manga version or something. I don't know, but it's still like 226 minute movie, which is good because if it would have been like a one, one hour and 30 minutes, there wouldn't be that necessary character development between Sheeta and Bazu and also just overall explaining the story and showing the grandiose world uh, where they live in. And the animation quality as it is Ghibli, it's just nice. I don't think this app as in, there was not as many like sequences where they could have like showcased their full potential and full animation quality as they did in Nausicaa. Nausicaa like really showed, hey, this is what we can do. This is what we can draw. Like some of the um, animations and bugs and fights and all that. Those were really detailed in the first uh, Nausicaa movie. While as in Castle in the Sky, I mean, the quality, as I said, it was still really good, but it maybe was not on that part of the level. They didn't really have as that type of a scenes where they possibly could have, you know, explored and showcased that talent. But overall, uh, Castle in the Sky is a good movie. It follows the same classical fantasy style. You have ancient crystals, you have airships, and you have ruins, and you have some creatures and machines. And it's just um, very interesting overall. But I do think that one of my maybe big problems, I did feel it was a bit of like... Uh, Alternative Nausicaa, this have too much similarities with Nausicaa. And if, especially when they came two years apart, they maybe showed too much similarities. It wouldn't have been a problem if Castle in the Sky came like 10 years after. But um, I do feel that they had maybe too many similarities between each other, which kind of made me feel like they were not really coming up with a lot of great ideas. So it ended up being quite similar to each other. But thanks for watching this review. Stay tuned for more Ghibli movies. Hopefully it won't take two weeks like this one, but um, expect it to be released much, much sooner. Um, if you enjoyed this review, give it a like, you give it a comment. What did you think about Castle in the Sky? And if you're interested, check out my other Ghibli movie reviews on my channel. Until then, I will see you guys later. Cheers.